Welcome to the program today. Manu Gonzalez here in studio with some special guests, but we're going to be discussing a, a newer book. But before we get into some of that, I want to remind everybody that we are going to be in Orlando, Florida at the Orlando Prophecy Summit. And if you want to know more information about that and to sign up, you can go to our website, prophecywatchers.com, and get all the information there. We got over 15 speakers that are going to be joining us. Probably a great time as well to be uh, in Orlando in March. Not too hot, not too cold, so we certainly invite you to be there. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a, a newer book called Trajectory, Tracking the Approach of the Coming Tribulation Storm. And this is an uh, anthology of authors who have come together with their different skill sets in order really to share some of the, the trends that are going on. And today we have Tim Moore. Welcome. Thank you very much, Mondo. Glad to be here. So, um, you know, for those in our audience that might not know who you are, kind of give a little bit of background. You have quite a background and uh, kind of share with them uh, where, where they can find out more about you and the ministry you're involved with. Well, I work with Lamb and Lion Ministries. We're headquartered near Dallas, Texas, but we have uh, outreach all over the country, literally around the world with our own television program, Christ in Prophecy. You've been a guest there mm -hmm. and we'll have you again very, very soon. Mm -hmm. And my background, well, prior to this role, I'm the senior evangelist at Lamb and Lion. I served in the Air Force for 34 years. I was in the Kentucky legislature for a while, don't hold that against me, <laughs> but it gives me a, a bit of a political perspective, and yet, uh, again, my passion has always been serving the Lord wherever He would put me, and right now, He's very much called me to this role. So let's talk about this book, Trajectory. I mean, um, one of the things that I've appreciated over the, really the past few years is some of these books that bring together not just one viewpoint of one author, but um, an, an anthology of authors. Kind of um, the editor, Terry James, you know, we all know him from, you know, Rapture Ready and other places. To kind of talk about how you came to be involved in this and that you got to write the forward and a couple chapters. Kind of give us Yeah, some that was a, a really unique opportunity. So Terry reached out. Obviously, Dr. Reagan has written with him before and been a part of some of his other uh, compiled books, along with Nathan Jones, my internet evangelist. Mm -hmm. And so Terry asked me as the new senior evangelist to write a chapter. I said, I'd be delighted to do so. And as I wrote one chapter, he said, you know, actually, I'd like you to write another chapter. And would you write the forward? And so what a great honor that mm -hmm. was. And I, I was glad to do so. So in, in the forward, you ask a good question, and I think it's where a lot of Christians, and maybe you uh, are thinking this, is, and, and maybe, you're, maybe you're new to being a Christian, or you have family, friends, relatives that are asking, um, where in the world is all this headed? You know, how do we as Christians, again, the goal is to be evangelistic, in your forward you kind of address it, kind of talk a little bit about that. Where are we headed? Well, I think the world is headed toward its ultimate destination, which is destruction. I mean, the, the Word of God is clear that the world has rejected Him. The, the majority of people on this planet to this day are not embracing of Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord, and so they are on the wide path to destruction. And, and that's the theme of trajectory. You know, you can look at it from a spiritual perspective, and consider where am I headed and where am I going to end up? So if you see where we, we start out, where we launch, where we are headed in terms of direction, you'll find out your ultimate destination. The sad thing is many people are very gleeful about heading in a, a hell-bent uh, direction, and yet that is what Scripture says. You are either on the straight and narrow path of salvation or you're headed toward yeah. destruction, and that's John 3.36. You know, those who have put their faith in Jesus Christ, we are promised eternal life. But those who reject Christ, well, the wrath of God abides on them. And I think that is the inevitable direction and trajectory of the mm -hmm. world. Yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting, and, and I think it's important for us to, to speak the truth. Um, you, you use the imagery of, of a bullet, mm. you know, and, uh, which, again, is very uh, good from your background as well, but, or a missile. And what, what do you say to those that, um, you Christians, you know, you guys are a bunch of uh, doom and gloomers. I mean... Um, the, the trajectory we mentioned, you mentioned the idea of the world is heading to destruction, and, and rightfully so. There's accountability that's coming. Um, is it all doom and gloom? No, it's clearly not doom and gloom. I mean, you can't say it's doom and gloom when you say, but, but Jesus Christ offers salvation. The Lord himself came to offer eternal life. That is a message of hope. Uh, Jesus is our blessed hope, as Paul wrote to Titus. And so that is an encouraging message, not only of hope, but of assurance. It is a blessed assurance for those who have put their faith in Christ. But really, it's a choice. And, and people say, well, I'll, I'll decide later. Uh, I like to quote one of my favorite uh, rock musicians, Neil Peart, who said, if you choose not to decide, you have made a choice. Mm -hmm. And so those who say, well, I just I haven't made up my mind yet. No, you've chosen to reject Christ. 
and you may have another opportunity, but none of us are promised yet another day, even another hour. Mondo, you and I, uh, we could be hit by a bus this afternoon or run over by a truck, so th the choice is for today. And that is why we, again, are either on the path to heaven because we've put our faith in Christ, or we are on the path to destruction. And that trajectory, it's an either or proposition. There's not a, a gray area in between. Yeah, no, and that, to me, it's pretty amazing. Uh, talk, if you will, as well, um, in the sense of the, the return of Jesus Christ. Um, I imagine even a, an average, even let's say an unbliever that mm -hmm. looks out at the world in that is, um, again, let's say maybe they're good, not in the holy yeah. sense, but they're, they're decent in an individual. They look around and like, man, look at our society. It's, 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 going, it's going crazy. Yeah. I would imagine even for them, um, whether they embrace Jesus or not, that's a separate question. But I imagine even for them that they would want this king who's perfect and righteous, and he comes to rule and, to, and gets rid of the porn shops, gets rid of the murder. I mean, you think that they would want this idea of, of making the world right. That's what we're waiting for. That's what Jesus is, is, is going to do, correct? I think it's deep in the human heart that all of us want justice. Mm -hmm. And so when, we, when things are not just, when they're not right, when they're not fair, that, that sets against our, our very nature. And so all of us, that, that's part of God's you know, image imprinted mm -hmm. upon our heart that we want things to be just and right. We don't like a world that is headed toward greater and greater chaos. And we witness it even in our own society that has abandoned its Judeo-Christian roots and now is, is fleeing headlong in an ungodly direction. And, and even those without spiritual discernment realize something is, is going very, very wrong, even in America. And so I think you're right, Mondo. They would recognize, well, if it's going wrong, we clearly are on a different trajectory, even as a society, than we have been for the last number of generations. I'm concerned about my children, my grandchildren, the kind of world they'll grow up in. You hear that all the time. Even in a political realm where I serve, folks recognize that something's not right and I want it fixed. Uh, you know, they'd say there ought to be a law. Well, it, we don't have enough laws or we can't make enough laws to fix the condition which is the source of the problem, and that is sin in the human heart. And again, those who reject the Lord God Almighty, uh, they are headed in a direction toward greater and greater uh, sinfulness and wickedness being manifest in this world. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well said. We're, we're going to take a little break here where you can see how you can get our, our monthly magazine, which 48 pages of full color. It's great. We have authors, all kinds of different authors writing in about different topics. And so take a listen. Every day, the ancient prophecies of the Bible get more and more exciting as we watch world events come into perfect alignment with the words of the ancient prophets. Examine the pre-trib rapture doctrine taught by the Apostle Paul. Come to a deeper understanding of the giants of Genesis 6 and the real reason for the flood of Noah. Read the shocking things we see coming out of the world of science and technology, mind-blowing advances in transhumanism and artificial intelligence. Keep a close eye for a series of wars coming very soon to the Middle East. The Bible's a supernatural book, and we enjoy covering the fringe subjects and dark corners of Scripture as well. UFOs, the Nephilim, the miracles of the Bible, and so much more. It's a one-of-a-kind publication full of articles that will make you a Bible prophecy expert and prepare you for the future. We have a very special subscription offer for you today. For your gift of $50 or more to support the worldwide outreach of Prophecy Watchers, you can subscribe to either the digital version or the print version of our magazine. And here's the best part. In addition to receiving 12 monthly issues of the magazine, this offer comes with a fantastic bonus. Eight DVDs from some of the leading prophecy experts in the world today. Eight DVDs plus 12 issues of the magazine represents a $200 value but it's available today for your gift of just $50 or more to support the work of Prophecy Watchers. This offer is available anywhere in the USA and will ship both the magazine and the DVDs absolutely free. Don't wait or hesitate. Call the toll-free number on your screen or visit our online bookstore at prophecywatchers.tv to take advantage of this limited time offer. Looking at the future through the lens of Bible prophecy is the entire focus of this ministry. We're motivated like never before by our desire to tell the world that Jesus is the only answer for these troubling times. And we do believe that he's coming back very soon, just as he promised. Partner with us today 
Help us take God's message of salvation through Jesus Christ to the whole world. So, welcome back. And um, one of the chapters that you wrote, you, you wrote the forward again, talking about the trajectory in the book, which, which was great. And then in one of the chapters, you focus on the, the winds of war, rumors, and ethnic anarchy. Um, you know, why that title? I think that the, the vision and ideal that our founders, even in this country, uh, proposed was for ordered liberty. And Americans pride themselves, quite frankly, on having individual autonomy. Mm -hmm. well, well, that's well and good to a point, but we have given ourselves over to almost an unfettered liberty. In other words, mm -hmm. not ordered liberty, but just do whatever I want. And that's the same condition that describes the nation of, of Israel back in the days of the judges. Every man did what was right in his own heart. So there's this inclination toward, I'm free to do whatever I want, therefore I will do whatever I want. And that can be destructive both to me as an individual mm -hmm. and to a society. And once that is unleashed, so once some of these, these orders are kind of uh, put aside as being patriarchal or oppressive, and you hear that word all the time these days, then what is unleashed is all of, of the chaos, all of the self-destruction, and that's what we're witnessing in our society. And yet some of our very leaders are not only tolerating it, they're embracing it and celebrating it, and that's what's most tragic, really. You know, that, that's, a, that's a good segue, because, you know, a lot of people you know, who are interested in prophecy, naturally, we all want to uh, uh, understand, well, where's America at in prophecy? You know, what's the role in, uh, of America? What's hmm. going to be our future? But yet, when we look at the past, I don't know, however, 10, 15 years, what do you see as the trajectory of our culture? Hmm. Talk a little, you, you mentioned that in, in your chapter, but t talk a little bit about that and um, wh where you see we're heading. I, I think, again, many who are in our elites, so whether that's academia, uh, the system of colleges and universities in the West, who have totally disparaged the foundations of our freedoms and of our system, of our society, and now have cast themselves into uh, a postmodern and a, a critical theory mentality to where everything is suspect, everything is, is denigrated. The other cultural drivers, whether it's Hollywood, the media, mm -hmm. uh, they are not perpetuating truth or even seeking truth. They're just churning, the, stirring the pot, so to speak, of our culture and trying to sow chaos. And that is being manifest in every major city in the country virtually as you see a breakdown of social order. I call it social entropy. You know, a lot of people like to ascribe to evolution. Well, we're just getting better and better, smarter and smarter, and, and we're evolving into a more progressive state. No, I don't believe that. I think we're devolving. And I think entropy means you go from order to greater and greater breakdown mm -hmm. and chaos. And we're seeing it before our very eyes. It's accelerating, but even those without eyes to see and ears to hear spiritually recognize something is terribly amiss. Well, you know, as you're watching this, you might wonder and think about America's past. And you bring up some great things in the book, and you, you mentioned the book of Judges already. Well, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's amazing to watch America's parallel uh, path in its history with the nation of Israel. I think mm -hmm. no doubt scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, that all these things were written as examples uh, for us to watch. So you have those, even in the, in the, in the nation of Israel, like, well, there's going to be no judgment. We have a covenant with God. Right. So even though, here, two questions, okay. Does America have a special covenant with God like Israel did? And secondly, um, is it true that even if we did, how, what's the ramifications that that might be far worse for what they imagine? Oh, I think that a special covenant is true in this regard. We, we have prided ourselves, and I use that word intentionally, on being a Christian nation. As a matter of fact, many of our viewers right now may have been highly offended when President Barack Obama said, this is no longer a Christian nation. And yet I've challenged Christians to say, if you claim to be a Christian nation, is that claim offensive to a holy God? Mm -hmm. When we not only tolerate, but we celebrate abominations that he declared are absolutely wicked. And so... Does God hold us to a special account? I actually put it this way. When I was a kid, uh, I would get in trouble sometimes, and, and my parents would hold me responsible for certain behavior. And I'd say, but none of my friends are getting in trouble. And my parents would say, yeah, but you knew better. And so, therefore, you are held to higher account because you knew that that was wrong. Well, okay, I, I, they probably were right. And to that same principle, we as a society have known better in the past. 
most of our, of our founding. Those people were not all evangelical Christians, but they respected and revered a Christian worldview in the sense of ordering the society according to what I've said already, Judeo-Christian yeah. principles. And when we have discounted that and discarded that, I think God holds us accountable because we knew better than going down the path we're currently on. I mean, when you think scripturally, uh, Jesus said, to whom much is given, much is required. And this country has been given a lot of light, a lot of scripture uh, from beginning to end. I mean, we know um, that the Bible is the most quoted book in the Founding Father documents. All, I mean, all the founding governmental documents, the Bible is the most quoted. Yes. So there's no lack of, of the Bible, churches on every corner, uh, versus many places in the world where they might not have, you know, you look at some of the, in the Muslim countries where there are no churches. Um, so we, um, if we want to claim that, hey, this is a Christian country because we want God's blessings, uh, Israel learned the hard way, right? They, they surely did. And, and frankly, it's, motto is we've turned things on their heads so badly, not you and me mm -hmm. and not our viewers, your viewers today, but, but as a society that today, Christians are essentially the, the troublers of our society. Yeah. It reminds me of what Ahab said to Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 18. He said, is this you, you troubler of Israel? Why was Elijah a troubler of Israel? Because he was calling to account those who were practicing wickedness. He was calling the people to repent and return to the true and living God, and he was calling out the leaders specifically, Ahab and his evil, wicked wife, Jezebel. And so he was considered a troubler. And Christians, if we are doing what we are called to do, being salt and light in whatever sphere the Lord has placed us, but definitely throughout our society, then we should be calling out things that are intolerable, calling people to return to the true and living God, and yet over and over again, society at large, and of course, again, our, our culture drivers, they consider Christians to be the troublers. We need mm -hmm. to be silenced and canceled. And let's just say, the Word of God is faithful and true, and we are called to be watchmen and to speak mm -hmm. out. I mean, prophecy watchers, yes, we're to, to watch for trouble that is approaching, and we see it on every corner, we need to sound the alarm. So I would encourage your viewers to do what y'all do on a regular and weekly basis, and that is sound the alarm, calling people back to the true and living God. So as you know, one of the criticisms, and you, you guys have probably heard this before, that um, well, Christians, especially those who believe in a, in a rapture that's prior to the tribulation, you guys are a bunch of escapists, you know. Um, with that as a backdrop, you know, we are, again, being the troublers of society, um, what's our what's our role? Um, we're waiting for the return. Um, you know, we we warn, but what's the Christian? You know, I guess in one sense, speak to the the Christian out there in the audience. It's like, well, what do you, what am I supposed to be doing right now? I mean, what do you tell? I tell them you're supposed to be living your life faithful to God, and wherever that that means. If you mean serving in a legislature as I did, it means serving in the military, serving in business, serving in academia. Serving in the media, uh, some of you watching today may be part of all of those different spheres, then you should be faithful to God wherever He has placed you, living according to the principles laid out in Scripture and honoring and serving Jesus Christ, not only as your Savior, but as your Lord. And when you do that, then the Spirit of God can work through you. And, and that's true in every era and age. And yet, even as we serve here and now, we don't get uh, discouraged by the decline of the world around us, it, and it can be very frustrating, I get that, but we never despair. We are people of hope because we know the blessed hope, and that's not just a, a concept like Oprah Winfrey would say of hope and hope, that is a person, Jesus Christ, who is our blessed hope, and He has promised that He is coming for us. We are the bride of Christ, and it's not escapism to say, I want to go and be with the bridegroom. That's just that's the aspiration we should all yeah. look forward to. And so until he comes, he's given us work to do and a purpose in this world. And that is, again, to serve him faithfully, to testify to the gospel and to, uh, to be his uh, hands, arms, and, and mm -hmm. the, the outpouring of his love in this world. I mean, I think too often uh, you, you bring up the idea of hope. And um, I think this might be good to explore for a minute is that... Um, when we think about a Christian and we think about our country, we see its decline. Um, some people can be discouraged and they can lose hope. Um, but is, is our hope rooted in uh, saving America politically, saving America's culture in the sense of creating a, a good society? I mean, 
uh, we're watching it decline, do we say, oh no, our, our mission, our vision is, is, is removed? I mean, ultimately, what is, what's our goal? Is our goal to, to fix America? Our goal is not to fix America in a sense of uh, an eternal goal. It is our responsibility to be good citizens wherever the Lord's place is. So, so Paul told the people living under Roman citizenship, you should be good citizens in Rome. Jeremiah told the exiles living in Babylon that they should be a conduit of blessing even to that pagan society because in its blessing you will be blessed. In other words, in its welfare you will have welfare. So wherever we live, whether it's in the United States, and many of your viewers may be here, but you may have people watching this program all around the world living in a very pagan society society. Well, so do we to a large degree. <laughs> Wherever we are, we should seek the welfare of that city, that community, that nation, because in its welfare, we have welfare and we become a conduit of God's blessing. And so, yeah, our, our hope is not in the salvation of the United States as an entity. We, we know scripturally and prophetically mm -hmm. all the nations of the world are going to come against the Lord and His anointed. So that's not in question. But until he comes, until things are, are so bad that, that we are literally locked away, we have the freedom in this country still, and we have the Christian responsibility, again, to speak truth into our culture. Amen. We're going to take a little break here where you can see how you can get this book trajectory. Again, multi-authors, lots of different topics. Uh, most of the authors you probably would know and uh, talking about, again, the trends, uh, that the trajectory that's heading. We're seeing all these signs come to a place of convergence. And it, it is a time of, well, uh, well, we'll talk about that after the break. Is it a time of hope or discouragement? The Bible tells us that Jesus will return at a time when most people in the world are not expecting him. The Bible describes his coming as a time when people are eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. In other words, life is relatively normal. But suddenly, the unexpected happens, catching the world by surprise. Millions of Christians are caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air while the world enters a seven-year period of judgment and tribulation. Christians who study Bible prophecy understand that Jesus tells us to watch the signs of the times so that the rapture won't catch us by surprise. After all, we're called the prophecy watchers for a reason. We're watching, and we hope you are too. One of the best ways to watch is to be well informed on prophetic events happening today at lightning speed. Our friend Terry James and a group of 17 other authors and Bible prophecy experts have recently released a book entitled Trajectory, Tracking the Approaching Tribulation Storm. In Trajectory, you're going to read about future wars, pandemics, insane weather, financial collapse, the rise of China, the persecution of Christians, the mass media cover-ups, political intrigue, the rapture, and the future of Israel. All of these events described in the Bible are examined by men like Tom Horn, Jeff Kinley, David Reagan, Tom Hughes, Pete Garcia, Nathan Jones, Bill Salas, Tim Moore, and several others. Trajectory is available for your gift of $25, with shipping included anywhere in the USA. Just call the toll-free number on your screen or visit our online bookstore at prophecywatchers.tv. Help us spread the good news. Jesus is coming soon and we want to be ready. We've also created a special three-book package we're calling the Signs of the Times Package. It includes Terry's Trajectory book, Steve Miller's book, Foreshadows, 12 Mega Clues on the Soon Return of Jesus, and The Disappearing, another great study by Terry James and Pete Garcia on the rapture of the church. When you order the three book package, we'll send you a fourth book as a free bonus, Jesus and the End Times by Ron Rhodes, and we'll ship it all to you for free anywhere in the USA all for your gift of $60 to help support the worldwide television outreach of Prophecy Watchers. Help us keep as many people out of the tribulation as possible. The only thing you can take with you in the rapture is your family and friends, so make sure you don't leave anyone behind. Thanks for supporting God's work here at Prophecy Watchers. Your support is vital to our mission of spreading the gospel to the entire world. 
Well, welcome back and, and, and talking with Tim Moore from Lamb and Lion Ministries. And um, you bring up in one of your chapters, um, should Christians be optimistic or pessimistic? Um, this this kind of goes with a little bit we are talking to before, but uh, how would you answer that? I mean, I think you can't look around at the decline of our society. I mean, Monty, you and I, we've been on this earth for a better part of a half century or more, and we have seen things change dramatically in our lifetimes. 20 years ago, would you have dreamed, could your viewers have dreamed how far our society would have declined in that time? And so that lends itself to a sense of, of gloominess or pessimism, and yet we're commanded to be people of hope, to manifest joy. Our circumstances don't dictate what should overflow from our hearts. And so we're not optimist in that, well, if we just have the right person put in office, if, we, mm. if the election outcome just turns uh, in our favor on the next election, whatever that happens to be, then everything will be great. No, Scripture again describes that the world is going to continue to decline. But our hope is in Jesus Christ. And He is unchanging. He is going to be victorious over all that is wrong in the world today because he's already conquered death and overcome the world. So that is where our hope lies. And if we keep our eyes on Jesus Christ, yes, we recognize the various trends around us. It's heartbreaking, but we are rightfully motivated to serve him because we keep our eyes on him. Mm -hmm. uh, last comment here. You know, we, I hear this phrase that, um, comment if you will on, um, and I'll probably not get it right, but uh, things aren't falling apart, they're falling into place. Right. So, talk, t I mean, talk about that. I mean, Yeah, we can get very uh, discouraged, again, just looking around. But if you read Scripture, if you do that dirty five-letter word spelled S-T-U-D-Y, mm -hmm. and you study the Word of God and understand He foretold all this. He foretold a rise in wickedness. He said at the end, the, the world would be like the days of Noah. There would be wickedness on the earth, and, and evil would permeate the hearts of mankind. And we're beginning to see that. So we shouldn't be discouraged. It should affirm that God knew this would happen, and it should encourage us to know that we are living in the season of the Lord's return. We never put a date, neither do you all, because that would be unscriptural. But we know that the signs are multiplying, the convergence is taking place, as you mentioned. And so we know that Jesus is at the very gates of heaven waiting for the Father to say, go and get your bride. And that's tremendously encouraging to me and to all who have put their faith in Jesus Christ because soon and very soon, He's coming for us. He's coming for all y'all, as we say in the South, who have put your trust in Him. Amen. Tim, appreciate your time. Mondo, thank you very much. As always. Godspeed, brother. Yeah, it's good. And uh, as, as we wrap it up here, the, I think Tim said it right, that we keep our eyes focused on Jesus. And as we look around, um, this is a time for faith. God has called us to be this very unique generation. And he's, he's not because we were so special, but because He's going to equip us by His Holy Spirit to stand strong. As we do watch the world continually coalesce, and to seeing end time prophecy unfold. And so we get to be, we get to watch, we get to participate, uh, not just be spectators, but we get to stand strong all the way till the Lord calls us home to be that faithful witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we appreciate you watching this week and we will see you next time. Mm -hmm.